We have all seen hundreds, if not thousands, of different movies in our lifetime. But sometimes, especially in action movies, we see our favorite actors do something absolutely insane where we think, well that's incredible, let's try that out. Movies would never lie to us, and everything in them must always be physically possible. Uh, but I'll have you know that this is wrong. Directors think you are all stupid, and they think that they are smart enough to take advantage of your lack of physics knowledge in order to get cheap thrills out of you. But luckily, someone will step out of the fray and expose these directors to what they really are. In this short documentary, I'll give a few examples of some of these ridiculous scenes. The kinds of scenes that will catch your attention for being awesome, but I'll just shatter your hopes and dreams and prove why they are physically impossible. In the 1994 film Speed, starring Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock, a bus is planted with a bomb that will detonate if the vehicle goes under 50 miles per hour. In this clip, the bus is approaching a bridge that is completely absent, and the driver revs up the motor and goes fast enough to miraculously overcome that gap. There is no incline on the bridge, and the platform it lands on is at the exact same level. Essentially what is happening here is that the bus is going so fast to the point where its horizontal velocity somehow overcomes its downward vertical velocity. But studying projectile motion, we know that horizontal and vertical velocities are completely independent of each other. For this to actually work, the portion of the bridge that the bus lands on must be well below the portion the bus drove off of, or there must have been an incline. Let's calculate those. We know that the bus was traveling at 67 miles per hour, and the gap was 50 feet long. Converting 67 miles per hour to 30 meters per second, and 50 feet to 15.24 meters, we can determine the amount of time it would take for a bus to travel that horizontal displacement, and that would be 0 .508 seconds. Using that value, as time is the same for both components, we can, we can determine how much the second platform would have to be below the original platform in order for the bus to be able to reach it. It must be at least 1.266 meters below the original platform. Now let's see what the angle would have to be if the bus jumped off an inclined ramp, but the level of the second platform was still the same. The bus would reach its peak hike at the halfway point in between the platforms at 7.62 meters. We can then find the amount of time for the bus to reach this halfway point, which is 0.254 seconds. Using this, we can find the original velocity in the y direction, which we can then use trigonometry with to determine the angle the incline must be to reach that particular speed, 4.745 degrees. All in all, the jump the bus made in the movie Speed would have been completely impossible unless there was a ramp or the second platform was lower than the first. If this were the real world, I would really hope Keanu Reeves would take a physics class before making a risky jump in a bus like this. In the over-the-top and overrated 2004 natural disaster film, The Day After Tomorrow, a freeze sweeps New York City <laughs> due to global warming. In this scene, star Jake Gyllenhaal miraculously outruns a breeze of frigid air and blocks it with the door. Check it out. I don't think this one is even worth making a mathematical explanation of. The cold somehow sweeps through the entire Empire State Building in a matter of seconds, yet a few people are somehow able to stop this evil cold wave with a door? Hopefully, nothing this bad will happen as a result of global warming to us, but maybe Al Gore will release an official statement saying you can block all weather with your door. In Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man saves the day by saving hundreds of people stopping a speeding train using only his body and his magical webs. Let's roll the clip.
good ideas? I got a few. Yeah. The R160 is a common subway that is used in New York City, and that is 38,000 kilograms, so we'll be using that value as an estimation. The train usually only reaches 55 miles an hour, but in the film something goes amiss and it somehow gets up to 80 miles an hour, which is equivalent to 35.763 meters per second. It took your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man 75 seconds to stop the train, so let's see how much force he had to exert. In order to stop the train, he'd have to exert a force of over 18,406 newtons the entire time, or about 4,137 pounds. I already know exactly what you're all thinking. Yeah, he's a superhero, so of course he can do that. Y yes, I know that he's a superhero, I know that he's that that's exactly what everyone's complaining about. However, actor Tobey Maguire only weighs 160 pounds, and a spider can only lift 8 times its own weight. This isn't Superman we're talking about here, and Spider-Man is sort of a freshman superhero. He should only be able to exert about 1280 pounds, not over 4,000. Well, there you have it. Three examples of ridiculous, unrealistic physics in movies. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you learned a lot. And I hope now when you watch movies, you learn some physics beforehand so you don't let evil directors take advantage of your lack of physics knowledge. Until next time.